Hey guys, it's Santi Radio. So tonight's topic is this, international school in Japan. Do you know international school? You know. So uh, tonight's radio, I think it's going to be very tough and harsh for, for Japanese parents who, send, who are sending kids to international school. So if you are the one, do not watch this right now. Just stop it right now. Do not, don't watch this because I'm going to be honest. As usual, this channel, no BS, okay? I'm gonna tell you how I feel, think about it as one Japanese guy, and then no BS, no sugar coated, okay? Seriously. So uh, if your kids go into international school in Japan, please don't, don't watch. Unless you can put your emotion aside and talk to me, productive conversation. You know, try this, but yeah, be ready for it. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Okay, so uh, anyway, so this channel is all about Japan, Japanese topic, okay? So if you like it, please subscribe, okay? Before you watch. So, let me share one comment, okay? My, from, my, from my subscriber, okay? And it's from uh, Tolga Nai. Thank you. And she said, Santi-san, I would like to ask you to make a video about differences between international schools in Japan and in Japanese schools, both public, uh, state, and private. In terms of standard education, which one do you think is better? And which school would you send your own children? Thank you, Toroganai. Okay, so uh, in this video, uh, first, let me share you that rough idea, okay, about international school in Japan, okay? And later, I wanna just uh, tell you honest opinion, okay, about this. Mm. Okay, so, I think the highlights of the differences between the international schools and Japanese school public and then uh, private is the maybe tuition fee, you know, tuition, the, the differences. Look at this. Boon. Can you see that? Yeah. So, Japanese high school, the public, it's about the elementary school, okay? If you go to Japanese elementary school, you just pay $1,000 a year. That's it. Okay? The one I went. And if you go to private one, you have to pay $9,000 a year. So this nine times. Expensive. If you go to an international school, $20,000. Can you imagine this? It's 20 times of the public school. That's the difference. That's the biggest difference, I think, between the international school and the public school in Japan. Mm. Tuition is fucking expensive. I don't know if it's worth it or not, you know. Let's talk about this later, okay? So, as you can see from this data, yeah? And by the way, it's average, okay? According to this article, it's from cheek.jp. If you, if, you, if, if, you want, if, if you want kid to go to an international school, you have to spend many, many things, right? Besides the tuitions. Therefore, in total, you have to spend maybe twenty to $30,000 a year. Twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. It's expensive. Okay. Therefore, those schools, they are certain caliber. Okay. Especially for Japanese people. Even though Japanese, uh, non-Japanese, it doesn't matter. Kids who can go there, they have money. At least their parents have money. Okay. So they are a certain caliber. So only a similar people just gather. All right. So that's what it is. And international school, as far as I know, as far as I search, they don't speak Japanese. They kind of force kids speak English only. And some school, it says, some school, they, f they just do, uh, they give fine if kids speak Japanese. Like uh, 50 cents, a dollar, like this. If you say, oh, Majika, oh, shit. I have to say, oh, fuck that, you know, <laughs> you have to say in English. Can you imagine this? <laughs> if you say majide, then you have to pay money. Can you imagine that? That's fucked up, man. But anyway, so that's why, so uh, they are good at English, obviously, because uh, all day, you know, with the kids, with the friend, with the teacher, friends, whatever, in the classroom, they speak English. So they have to speak English, right? They learn in English. And also, they study the American history. It's international school, you know, American history, okay? Mainly, many American kids go there, I guess. At least, they don't learn Japanese history, though. That's one thing. Okay. 
And also they said, what is the pro about this uh, going to international school? You can go to a great university overseas, like Harvard, Columbia, Yale, Princeton, whatever, all right? University, uh, I don't know, Imperial College of London, whatever, it doesn't matter. It says uh, many great university. You have a uh, broad, you know, opportunities for kids. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So let's say if your kids go there, like from, you know, just like uh, elementary school, six years plus, you have another five, uh, six years, right? Uh, middle school, uh, high school, junior high school and high school, right? So it total maybe how many years? Uh, 12 years, yeah? 12 times uh, $20,000, let's say $30,000, okay? So you have to spend $360,000. Yeah, $360,000 for just tuition. That's what cost, all right? If, you, if your kids go to international school in Japan, okay? That's the reality. Got that? Got that, all right? And by the way, the most of the kids who go to international school, their parents is expat, expatriate, uh, or like a uh, diplomat, you know, who goes for, uh, or governors who stay in Japan for a while. You know, those kids go to school like this. It happens. Other than that, they go to public school, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what it is, okay? So from now, I want to share my, my idea. To be honest, okay, okay, I have to be careful about this, right? Okay, let me tell you nicely, okay? It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Seriously, man. That's the nicest thing that I can say. It's fucking ridiculous. I mean, seriously. Just think about it. I mean, <clears throat> if, if, okay? Let's go back to her questions, right? So first of all, all right? The difference between international school, I just told you, right? So in terms of standard of education, which, do you, uh, which one do you think is better? Obviously, the public, the Japanese school. Obviously, yeah. And which one, uh, which should you send your own kids? My, my kids definitely go to public school. Even though I'm a millionaire. Even though my salary, a year, yearly income is uh, $10 million. I definitely send my kid to public school. Let me tell you why. Just imagine that, all right? The best, the beauty of public school is you can meet any kind of people, right? In the world, in the world, there are tons of people out there, right? As you know, you know? And some people are very smart. Some people are fucking dumb. Some people were like a genius. Some people are criminals, right? But they were a kid. They were a kid at one time, right? And they went to a public school, right? So the public school is a place you can meet all kind of people. All of them who are good at, sp uh, at sports, be it athlete, uh, athletic, or who, who are good at uh, communication, who are good at like uh, talking to other gender, or uh, senior, s seniors, juniors, or who's good looking, bad looking, you know, whatever. Who is poor, rich, whatever. But they are all nicely hang out, and then they get to know each other, but they slightly understand the differences between them, among them, oh my god. Tanaka-san's house is very poor. Look at this house. Oh my god, it's like a house. It's like a tent. You know what I mean? So they think that this, but my on the other hand, my house is kind of nice. You know, they start knowing that what the reality is. What is the reality? Yes. So uh, as a kid, they observing those reality by just communicating with the kids. And on top of that, there is no bias towards each other because they are a kid, right? So uh, if let's say nowadays, you know, if you if it's a many, there are many psychological like experiments. If the one guy dress up like a dress up like a suit nicely and a cologne put on it, right, and they're walking outside, or if they dress up like a hobo, okay, like a homeless, do do you help homeless? No, but they help this business person. You know, you've seen this kind of experiment everywhere, right? Because people judge by outlook. Seriously, that's the reality. Come on, man. But when you're a kid, no. However, you also face that, the bullying each other, whatever, many things in, in public school, right? So that's the beauty of it. If you have experienced that when you're young, your sense about, about the, how to survive in the life, or like uh, how, what is your standard, what is your background, what is your status? You know, you start feeling it. Oh my God, my house is so poor. Oh my God, my house is so rich, whatever. They start understanding, right? But if you send a kid, those school, not even private school, 
private school again nine times higher all right it's nine thousand dollars a year that's still expensive for many many families right so who can go who can send a kid to those public uh, private school they must be wealthy certain level but not crazy wealthy but you know but it's wealthy enough right so they think that you know that, that that's their world right i don't think they're gonna see like uh poor people you know what i mean they might have some different you know they might have some like a uh, diversity in the private school too but about financially definitely they don't they think that's the standard right and they're gonna be a closed mindset seriously it's like they instill the the life they had in a private school is that is it right and if you send a kid to an international school that is their world can you imagine that <laughs> that is their world those people they'll never understand the poor people i feel they might they might but i don't i doubt it to be honest the experience you had when you're young is critically important for kids or for, for human being i think that's first reasons okay that's first reason why i send my kids to the public public school because i want them to feel the reality of the life because in the end what you learn in a school it doesn't much it, it doesn't make a difference to be honest i think it's almost same but what you experience, what you feel when you're in a college, elementary school, junior high school, high school, whatever, you, it's definitely important, you know, to nurture uh, your personality, to cultivate your personality. It's very important. All right. And that next point. Okay. What about the language? Oh my God, seriously. Okay, fine. Private school, fine. It's, it's, it's still expensive, but they study Japanese, right? But international school? Are you serious? They speak only English, man. I mean, oh, fine. If I get married with Lisa, she's a blonde from Germany, right? And then what? And then my kid is like my face, but the blonde hair, whatever. Then fine. I might send my kids to the international school, you know? And then Mary doesn't speak Japanese, let's say. We only communicate in English, right? And then in my house, we only speak English. And then I happen to have $1 million uh, salary, okay? So it doesn't bother me, you know, to pay like a $30,000 tuition for a kid, right? Then I might send my kid to the international school. I don't know, to be honest. But anyway, so if I have that kind of situation, and also on top of that, I know that I don't leave this country another few another few decades, okay? I'm going to leave in one or two years to Germany. You know, I'm going to live with my um, my wife and start having a life there. If I have that kind of mentality, I raise my kid as something else. No offense, something else. You know what I mean? They don't. He doesn't need to learn Japanese. Fuck Japanese. Just don't. Just memorize the English. I would say that. Mm. If you want to, you can watch anime or whatever if you want, but I don't push you to watch. I might say that. Because if I determine that, if I know that we're going to move to Germany for life, you know. But again, I love my country and I, I truly believe that Japan is the best place to live. Seriously, after I've been to uh, 60 or 70 countries in, in the world, I truly believe so. For Japanese, you know, for Japanese. Therefore, I don't want to live here. I want to live here. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, I don't want to put, uh, send him. And also, that if you go to English school, let's say, okay, some people say you have an opportunity to go to Harvard, Cambridge, Columbia, whatever the great school for, uh, for when you go to university. Really? Are you serious? Come on, man. So if you can speak English, can you get into the Harvard? Are you fucking serious, man? So all Americans, all Canadians, they can go to Harvard then. Then it's not Harvard, it's public school. <laughs> Do you understand this? <laughs> Seriously, language proficiency, yes, it's important. Yes, it's definitely important to communicate. But seriously, it's not that your, it's not about your accent, it's, you know, pronunciation. It's not about your, like a grammar. It's not about your, you know, terminology you use. It's about what you talk. That's more important. I know there are zillion American people or English speaker, perfect English, but they're criminals. I know there are tons of people who speak perfect English, but they're dumb. They cannot go to Harvard. They're not book smart. There are many the kind of people, right? So uh, why you have that kind of logic? Uh, if I send my kid to international school and they can go to Harvard. Come on, man. It is, it's a myth. But small percentage, they are smart anyway. 
so they can have a choice to go to other university, right? A good university, right? But the majority of them, they can't. They can't afford it. I mean, not afford it. Yeah, afford it too, by the way. I'm not talking later, okay? They cannot catch up with the study. So they have to go to some other school, like uh, lower class, University of Buffalo, <laughs> or Trinity College. Oops. Trinity is a good school, by the way. Trinity is a good school, by the way. Yeah, in Ireland. In Ireland, you know? <laughs> Don't get mad at you, okay? I went to Trinity College, okay? So, anyway, that's why the, you know, the language wise, it doesn't really connect, you know? Speaking English, you can go to good university. Come on. And also, most of Japanese people think that go to good university can lead to a great job. That's kind of true, too, yes. That's kind of true. Nowadays, it's kind of no, though, but it's okay. It's kind of true still, right? So if you, you want to go to higher education, right? Like higher rank or university. But again, proficiency of English, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that, you know, your kid can go to Harvard. Obviously, but they can not Anyway, so that's the one thing. And on top of that, right? If my kid study English in international school, do you think they are fluent? Do you really think that they're gonna be like American? First of all, the content you learn in an in in international school, maybe you learn about Christianity too, or American history, not Japanese history as far as I searched there. So they are raised as American, right? In an international school. That is fine if your father, mother, American, or if you have a certain uh, uh, situation that you and the, your, your wife go to America in the end, go back to America in the end for life. That kind of situation, right? That's fine, I think, you know, because uh, they don't care about Japan, oh, fine. But if you are Japanese parent and you don't speak ja English, let's say, okay, and you're sending your kid to international school because you don't, you have money, that's pathetic, man, seriously. <laughs> and your kid doesn't learn Japanese history? And on, he might be able to speak English. Yes, it could be better than mine. Yeah, pronunciation, whatever. But trust me, his Japanese it doesn't polish though. His Japanese is limited. And his English too. Because I know as a cross-cultural communication like a lecturer or consultant, I know language isn't about language. Language is always coming to the culture too. If you don't understand the culture, you don't really get the language yet. You get, you get that? So maybe you can learn some language, yes, just language whole, yeah, in an international school. However, can you get a, a culture? Yes, you learn about the American history with George Washington, whatever, if you want to. But the culture, like smoking pot, you know, like a dumping girlfriend, whatever, those stuff are happening in American high school. You don't learn it, seriously, <laughs> in an international school. <laughs> because kids go there, first of all, they're rich. You know what I mean? Certain caliber. You know what I mean? It's not like a real high school in America. So if I were the parents, if I really want my kid, like grow up as Americans, okay? I send them to America, live there by yourself. I would do that. But why international school? You don't get the both of it. You don't, the kid doesn't get, don't get a higher level of Japanese because there's no class for Japanese class, you know? If you speak, they find you, you know what I mean? And English, it's okay English, you know, fine. If you start going to like, uh, if the kids going to international school from here, elementary school, right? They might have a uh, good English, but trust me, his Japanese is so limited. Yeah, that's it. That's the, wor the worst part of this. And Japanese is one of the most difficult language to memorize, to learn, to gain. And you are giving up the opportunity when you're a kid is the best opportunity, best time. And Japan is a, still a third major com, uh, com, country. And then the country, you know, country itself, it's a good market enough. On top of that, on top of that, you don't really get the, the real English because you don't know the culture. I mean, yes, you can learn some culture in international school, I guess, but it's not like what you have in, a, in, in, a, in, in locally, though. That's how I feel. Do you understand this? Because I met many American, uh, Japanese kids who study, practice English here. And then, you know, we, sometimes I communicate, right? But the way we 
you know, the vibe is different. Okay, it's kind of a young kid, but the vibe, you know, the way we communicate, it's not what I had in fraternity, you know what I mean? It's kind of different. It's kind of different. Yes, they speak English, but it's the, you know, I, it's very difficult to describe, but the way we communicate is a bit different. The one who have never experienced overseas, the one, you know, got education overseas, it's a bit different. And I feel really different who was born, raised, grew up there as American. I had some friends, they're Japanese, but, and they speak Japanese too, but they're American, you know, those are Japanese American people. I met there in the university. I feel difference too between me and him. So it depends on what you want though, to be honest, you know. Okay, and lastly, this is very important, identity crisis. Look, so when I was in America, uh, in, in university, I met many kids who came from China. Oh my God, many, many friends, seriously. They were in my fraternity too. They're good, good, good people. They came to America when they're 13, 9, or like uh, sometimes like a 15, 17, kind of late, you know, or sometimes early, or sometimes born raised in, 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 uh, in America, but they look Chinese, okay? So I have many ch good Chinese friends, or Chinese American friends, I think. But what I felt is they don't really fit though. Mm. There is always a gap between like uh, the white American people and uh, those, you know, those my friends, to be honest. I think that's how, how I felt. Yes, you guys are one, united. Yes, you know, you know, I know, yes, you know, go Biden, yes. But seriously, I, what I felt is there are some distance though. You know, Ebonic people and you know, uh, black people and then uh, white people and Hispanic and Asian, totally different. And even though the Asian people, the people who are born and raised in, in, in America as American, they can go everywhere, but uh, who just came from overseas, uh, China, and started living in America, like what, five or four years ago, that kind of people, they don't really you know, match well. That's how I felt. You know what I mean, right? If you're American, come on, please be honest. So. That's what I felt, you know. So, I mean, you know that 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 is why if you if you're sending your kid to international school, he is like a, in Japanese, chutahampa, mm. limited in language, limited in culture. Mm. Very chutahampa. Chutahampa means like a, in it's very clear, unclear, like a vague, like a it's not fully, you know, completed. It's like a half done. You know what I mean? It's it's ha -ha, like this. So, look, yes, my English is fucking limited, yeah? I know, yes, but my Japanese is uh, gr good enough <laughs> for business and good enough for enjoying the entertainment or culture or art, right? Whatever. But for the kids who went to international school, hmm, I doubt it. Hmm. So, I don't know why. Yeah, that, that is the Okabaku story, okay? The identity crisis. So, when they are going to international school, and they're learning English, and they're learning, uh, they're learning American history. They definitely feel like, who am I? Who the fuck am I? And I wanna go to our Japanese high school, Japanese university. Let's say he went or she went, okay? They definitely feel something's different. I mean, the way we communicate are different too. And sometimes they feel superiority. Like, uh, you know, I speak English, the one you're studying so fucking hard. I speak that, you know, and I'm a snobbish. That could be happened too. But more than that, they don't, I, I guess, you know, from my experience, they don't feel like a Japanese when they're in Japanese university. They don't match like a, you know, like a, like a, like a, like a real Japanese, you know, because they are grew up as America, American, okay? But on the other hand, if they go to America, do they feel like American? I doubt it though, to be honest. I doubt it. Yes. I doubt it. Yeah. Mm. Even though like a fraternity I joined in America, like most of most of Japanese I mean, besides me, there's only one Japanese guy who joined a fraternity. That's it. And there are thousands, I uh, no, uh, about 300, 400 Japanese kids who were studying back in days. But no one joined a fraternity sorority, nothing. You know. Because the culture is so different. So if you don't share the culture, if you're not brave enough or flexible enough to jump into a new culture, 
to, to establish a new relationship, right? If you're not willing to, to do this, it's very difficult and it's easy to reject too, you know, because it's not mandatory. You can choose who you hang out, right? So um, even though you spend time in international school, in, in high school, whatever, and if you go to America, it doesn't guarantee that you have a great American life. Of course, Australia, England, same, I think. Mm. That's how I felt based on my experience. Mm. So they feel like, uh, who am I? What the fuck am I here? I don't know who am I. My English is limited and Japanese is limited in a culture. I don't know which one is the best for me. And those people start calling themselves, I am a global citizen. Oh my God. I mean, it is okay. Okay, sorry. If you like that kind of SDG kind of idea, it's okay. Totally, it's up to you. But me, no thanks. I mean, it's okay. You can call yourself a global uh, citizen, whatever, and then start talking about freedom of speech and stuff. So, so. It's, it's fine. Fine. Do whatever you want. Okay. And, but those people end up in America, though, I think, because they don't really feel they fit in Japanese uh, society. Mm. So, the, it, yeah, that's the, that's the cases. I, have, I think there are they're, they're many kind of cases. And lastly, okay, let me add this too. Which is pathetic, well, I, uh, ironic too, which it, that, that is that if the parents, if the Japanese parents, if they cannot afford you know, that kind of high, 